Hello and welcome to Structure Point. Today I will take you through a quick tutorial of the SPMATS program. In this tutorial, I will introduce the program, demonstrate how to create a simple mat supported by soil, and explain some of the results of the program. At the end, I will show how to elaborate on the example by including pile supports. To start off, SPMATS is intended for the analysis and design of concrete foundation mats, combined footings, and slabs on grade, subjected to static loads. SPMATS uses plate bending theory and Winkler finite element method to calculate the resulting soil pressures, deflections, and bending moments within the system. Provided with design parameters, SPMATS will also determine the reinforcing requirements as per ACI 318 or CSA 823.3. For more information on the solution process, see the user manual located within the program or online at www.structurepoint.org. Today we are going to create a 20 inch flat mat supported by soil and subjected to a single interior column load of 600 kips. Let us begin by creating a new file. Our first step is to define our foundation. For this example, let us use ACI 318-08 and English units. Notice we could have just as easily been working in a previous edition of the code in metric units or with a Canadian code. Our next step is to define our grid for this project. The grid will not only set the spacing of the elements used in the analysis, but also the boundary of our project. There is no hard and fast rule for the sizing of the elements since accuracy depends on aspect ratio, but a good rule of thumb is to create a thin plate system using a ratio of 2 to 1 length to thickness. The grid can be set up by defining grid lines by coordinate, but since most projects can utilize uniform grid spacings, we will go to generate and generate a 20 by 20 foot area with 1 foot spacings. With our workspace created, we will now define the project properties by going to define on the left of the screen. As we can see over on the right, each property has default values automatically loaded with any new file. In this example, we will design a 20 inch mat of 4.5 KSI normal weight concrete reinforced with grade 60 steel. As we can see, several of these properties are already defined by the defaults. Let us now add our project properties. We'll begin with adding the thickness of 20 inches. Going over to the left, we'll relabel it and assign a new thickness and select add. Let's look at the soil properties. We'll assume that the sand property is going to be sufficient for our project here. And looking at the concrete, we need a new concrete um, that conforms to our 4.5 KSI. So we'll relabel it, enter our 4.5. Um, and notice that the Young's modulus changes automatically. It's a function of the compressive strength and the unit weight. Changing the unit weight will also change the Young's modulus, as you can see. This could be overridden if you want, but we'll just click Add. Uh, our grade 60 is already inputted. And our design parameter... Um, we're going to use this one right here. We'll be following ACI code, uh, which dictates that you need 0.18% reinforcing in your mats, and this is accomplished by setting the minimum reinforcing as 0.09%, and that's 0.09% in each face, which comes out to a total of the 0.18% required. And then also this design parameter has 3 inch cover, which will be sufficient for our project. Let's now assign our properties to the model. Go to Assign on the left, and the properties can be assigned by left-clicking anywhere inside the grid, and they show up as red boxes when they're assigned to a property that's, that's highlighted. You can also drag and click and surround the boxes that you want to, and then Unassign is done by right-clicking on the model or right-dragging across the model. At this point, all these labels are somewhat distracting from what we actually want, so let's right-click on the screen, go down the options, and just unselect these labels. Now, let's go ahead and assign the rest of the properties for this project. Finally, we need to do the, the column. We want to put this column right in the center of the, the screen. We can go down on the left of the screen, down on, towards the bottom, and it gives us the actual coordinates right there, uh, so we can confirm that we're putting it right where we want to put it. We still need to define our load, so let's go back to define and go over to loads up on the tabs. Uh, before we do this, let's look at the load combinations though so we know what we're doing. Uh, each load case is assigned a different property uh, and that's reflected in the load combinations, the default load combinations that are loaded. Uh, we have dead, live, um, snow, so forth. 
Um, and now let's go to the loads. We had said that we have a interior column load um, of 600 kips, and we want to make this negative because it's acting downwards. And just click Add. Uh, and similar to the other properties, go back to Assign, go to Loads on the tabs, Interior. We now have a fully defined model. So let's go ahead and solve it. Uh, run Solver, and let's just click Run. Uh, you need to save the file before you can, can run the solver, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, and this is our result. This is the contour map of the, the deflection of uh, our model. We can also go and look at the, the internal moments uh, in the bottom as well as in the top. And let's look at the bottom. We have a, a large spike in moment right over here, as you can see by the, the contour map. And this is a result of the point load of the column. If we go back and look at the um, option that we had chosen before we ran our solution, we had chosen to use the maximum moment within an element for design and for the, the contour maps. Uh, let's go ahead and select the average moment within an element for, for the contour maps, which will give us a, a better idea of what's going on within our map foundation. Going back to the results, looking at the moment in the bottom of the slab, we can see, still see that we have our maximum moment at the center, which we would expect, but the magnitudes of the adjacent moments are not as extreme anymore, uh, and that's a result of the averaging of the, the stresses within an element, which smooths out that, that moment spike that we were seeing earlier. Now let's investigate what would happen if we had chosen a mat that was too thin to support the, the moments that uh, the model was experiencing. So let's go ahead go back to define uh, a thin mat. Let's use a 12 inch thickness mat. Um, just add a new new definition in here and go to assign and assign this new thickness to the entire entire system and then all the other um, properties will transfer over with this new thickness. Go to solve, run solver and now we're looking at the results here. Uh, the contour maps will be similar. The moments will We'll have a similar pattern to all of it, but if we go to the reinforcing, uh, let's look at the, the top first. The top is still just controlled by the, the minimum that we set earlier uh, with the design parameters, but if we look at the bottom, we have this error message come up right now, and what this error message is telling us is that the system could not fit enough steel in this hashed section to adequately resist the moment that was being generated. Uh, we can see that the, the red section right here, this is the maximum reinforcing that we can fit within the 12 inch thick mat. Well, let's go back. I want to highlight one other one other result here, um, but let's change it back to the 20-inch thick mat. I want to talk about the punching shear check, which is not a contour map. You, you have to run the system, and then instead of going to the view contours, let's go to view results, and down on the, the right hand of the screen, we have the punching shear, and let's look at the, the U2, which is going to be our maximum load case. Uh, from earlier, we can go back and look at the load combinations uh, under define, and the U2, this is going to be the, the 1.6 live. And if you remember, our column load is all live load. So let's go back, look at the, the U2 again. We see that the punching shear is unsafe. Our, um, our shear, our punching shear resistance is not adequate to, to resist the, the shear being generated. Um, so what we can do is we can just add a little extra thickness to our mat around this column capital to resist the punching shear. Uh, so let's add another 12 inches. So that'll be 32 inches total. Uh, add this property in, and go back, assign, find find the center of the mat, similar to how we found the, the center of the column earlier, uh, by looking down on the, the uh, coordinates, and let's add it an extra foot beyond what the column uh, size is, rerun the program, and if we go back, look at the, the results, the punching shear, we now see that we're safe, that our, our resistance is adequate for the, the punching shear uh, generated. So far, our model has assumed that we're being supported by soil. I want to show how to assume that we're being supported by piles. To do that, we need to go ahead and first define the pile by going to Define, and Restraints, selecting Piles. We're going to create a new pile called Pile 1, and we're going to put a placeholder here for now. Click Add. We'll assume that we have just a, a drilled pier of 24 inches goes 65 feet. Uh, there's zero embedment into the, the foundation. This, uh, this only affects the punching shear calculation the program does around each pile. We have a, a concrete material 
our modulus of elasticity and the selected soil um, is going to be bedrock. This is the soil that the pile bears into, not the, uh, the soil that is surrounding the pile as it embeds. Select OK. And now that placeholder that we had put for the spring constant earlier is calculated for us. I want to point out here that SPMATS models piles assuming only end bearing. Uh, it does not assume any contribution due to side friction along the length of the pile, which may be appropriate for your model. Um, if it's not, however, you can go ahead and calculate the spring constant on your own and input it manually here. And all you have to do is click Modify. And now our spring constant is the user-defined spring constant. We'll go ahead and assign these piles by going to Assign and Restraints. Go to our pile. Assign them. Go to Solve. And now we have the results as we did before. The only difference now is when you viewed the punching shear. Not only will we have the punching shear around the column, which is safe still, we also have the punching shear around all of the piles. This concludes our presentation for today, and if you have any questions, give us a call or send us an email. And if you're interested in trying the program out for yourself, free 14-day trial licenses are available to download on our website.